Hello guys, I am Usman, a prep class tutor. You're welcome to our wonderful section of learning mathematics with prep class. In today's section, we are going to start by solving questions from the Hugo Sigo mathematics past questions. Now in this video, we are going to be solving questions number one to number five. This is to enable you to prepare and understand how mathematics questions are being solved. Now, let's learn new techniques on how to solve mathematics questions. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to get access to all our videos and make learning very much easy for you. Preplus is always ready to put you at the edge of learning. Now let's start our solving for today. We start with question number one. Question one, write in figure 1,020,017. We have the options A, 1,020,017. One zero comma zero two zero comma zero one seven C one two comma zero zero one D one zero two comma zero zero seven and the last option E one zero zero comma zero one seven. Now which one of these is going to be the right answer? The only way we can find out is to solve. How do we solve? We have the question. Write in figure 1,020,017. Now we have to start by breaking each word into figure. Now the first word we have here is 1 million. Now remember, million has six zeros. So if I write 1 million, it means I'm writing 1 with 6 zeros. So this is 1 million. 1 with 6 zeros. Very good. Now, the next word is 20,000. Now, 1,000 has 3 zeros. So because I have 20,000, so it means I should be writing 20 with 3 zeros. So that is giving us 20 with three zeros, 20,000. Now the last part is 17. 17 is a number. So writing 17 in figure is 1, 7 to give us 17. Now what is the next thing we need to do? When we combine each of these figures, we are going to get the figure expression for 1,020,017. So we write 1 million plus 20,000 plus 17. Now when we add this, starting from the rightmost column, which is the unit, 0 plus 0 plus 7, that will give us 7. 0 plus 0 plus 1, that will give us 1. 0 plus 0, that is 0. 0 plus 0, that is 0. 0 plus 2, that's giving us 2. Now we have zero here. There's nothing we can use to add, so we write zero. Now one is here, which is the last number we have to deal with. There's nothing to add to this one, so we simply drop down the one, and that is giving us one comma zero two zero comma zero one seven, which is one million twenty thousand and seventeen. That was very simple, right? Yes. If you know how to break down mathematics, it will be easy for you to put down your solution. So looking at the options, the correct option is option A, 1,020,017. Quite easy. Now let's move to the next question. Question number two. Write down in words, 370. Comma eight nine four. We have the options A three thousand seventy thousand and eighty four B 
three million seven hundred and eighty thousand and ninety four. C three million seventy hundred and eighty four. D three million and ninety four. E three hundred and seventy thousand eight hundred and ninety four. Now, this is more like question number one we just solved. But in question number one, we converted from words to figure. Now we need to convert from figures to words. How can we do this? Very simple. Now we have 370,894. Now when we break this number into two parts, we are going to be having the hundreds part and the thousands part. That is, whenever we have a comma, it means the first three digits is representing 100. Then the next three digits is standing for 1000. So this is giving us 370 under the thousands and 894 under 100. Now, we can further break each part into place values. That is, for the thousand part, we have 370 to have their place values to be 0 having units. 7 for tens, 3 for 100. So it means if I want to pronounce this, I'll say 370 because the unit here is 0. So it is 370. So using the hundreds, tens, and units, we've been able to pronounce this number. Now, because this 370 is under the thousands, so it means you are going to call it 370,000. Very easy, right? Good. Now let's move to the next part. 894. This is the 100 part, looking at this number as a whole. Now we can further break these numbers into place values. So 8 is for hundreds, 9 for tens, 4 for units. So if I want to pronounce this, I'll say 894. Very simple. Now, combining the numbers, we can now express the number in words. So this will give us 370,000 from here, 370,000, then 894. So we have 894. So that is how simple it is to bring numbers from figures into words. Now, the correct option is option E. 370,894. Now we've solved question one and question number two. I hope that was very easy for you to comprehend. So let's move to the next question. Question number three. What is CLXII? We have the options. A, 116. B, 162, C, 159, D, 164, and the last option, E, 199. CLXII is representing Roman numerals. So it means we have to convert the Roman numerals into figure. Now, how can we do this? We must know what each of these symbols stands for. What is C representing for Roman numerals? What is L representing? What is X representing? And what is I representing? So, from Roman numerals, C equals 100, L equals 50, X equals 10, I equals 1, I equals 1. So, what do we need to do here? To convert from Roman numerals into figures, we are going to add what each of the symbols stands for. That is C equals 100, L50, X10, I1. So we are going to say 100 plus 50, that is 150. 150 plus 10, 160. 160 plus 1, 161. 161 plus 1, that is giving us 162. You can see how simple it is for us to convert from Roman numerals into figures. Same applies to when we want to convert from figures into Roman numerals. It means we have to break down 162 into numbers of this form to get our expression in Roman 
numerous. So, from the options, we have B to be the right answer. 162. Now, let's move to the next question. Question number four. Find the value of 1.7 in a bracket raised to the power of 2. 1.7 raised to the power of 2. It means you have to multiply 1.7 by 1.7. Options. We have A, 28.9, B, 27.8, C, 28.09, D, 2.89, E, 2.809. Now, let's multiply. Because we already know that 1.7 raised to the power of 2 means 1.7 will multiply itself. That is 1.7 multiplied by 1.7. Now, 1.7 raised to the power of 2 equals 1.7 multiplied by 1.7. We already said that. Now, how can we multiply a number having decimal point? To make multiplication very easy, we are going to ignore the point from the two numbers. So instead of writing 1.7, we are going to be having 1.7 without the point, making it 17. The 1.7 here also will change to 1.7 without the point, which is giving us 17. So we have 17 multiplied by 17. Now, if you perform the multiplication, this implies that 17 multiplied by 17. Now, let's multiply. 7 times 7, that is 49. We write 9, we carry 4. 7 times 1, 7. Plus the 4 we carry, that is 11. So we are going to write 11. Now, we'll go to the next number, which is 1. 1 multiplied by 7, that is giving us 7. 1 multiplied by 1, that is 1. Now we can add 9 plus, since there is no digit here, we are simply just going to bring down 9. 1 plus 7, that is giving us 8. 1 plus 1, that is giving us 2. So this means that 17 multiplied by 17 will give us 289. But that is not what the question wants us to find. The question wants us to find 1.7 raised to the power of 2, which is 1.7 times 1.7. Now, because we already ignored the point, so we now had 17 multiplied by 17, which is giving us 289. The next thing is to return back the point. How do we return the point? Returning the point, since we have 17 multiplied by 17 to give us 289, therefore, 1.7 multiplied by 1.7 will be equals to, now looking at 1.7, after this point, there is one digit. The next number, after this point, there is also one digit. So this means that there are two digits after the point in total. So it means from the last digit here, we are going to count two digits. Nine, eight, giving us two digits. So that means we are going to put the point in between two and eight. So we are going to be having 2.89 to be the product of 1.7 and 1.7. So, the correct option is option D, 2.89. I hope you understand how we explain that. Remember, if you have to multiply numbers having points, the best thing is to ignore the points. After ignoring the points, multiply without the point. Then the answer you get, refer back to the initial question you had. Count how many digits you have after the points. Then, then you count the same number of digits from your final result to get the right answer. Now remember you are counting from the last digit in the number. So for this question, the answer is option D, 2.89. Good. Let's move to the next question, question number 5. And this is going to be the last question in this video. In our next video, we are going to solve further from our Yugo Siugo Mathematics past question. So, question number five. 0 0.1226 multiplied by 0 0.04. We have to multiply here. A, 0 0.54. B, 0 0.50. C, 5.04940. D, 1.0000. 0 0.0940. 
E0.004904. Now, how do we multiply here? We are going to multiply following the same process as we did in the previous question. So now, 0 0.1226 multiplied by 0 0.04. We are going to start by ignoring the point. So ignoring the point, we have 1226. How do we get 1226? Remember, we have 0 0.1226. If we ignore the point, we are going to have 0 0,1226. -2 Since the 0 is coming before 1, so it means the 0 is invalid. Okay? So we are going to have 1226, ignoring this 0. Now we also have 0 0.04. If we ignore the point, we are going to be having 0, 0, 004, which is still the same thing as 4. Now we can multiply 1226 by 4. Alright? Now we have 4, we multiply 6. 4 times 6 is 24. Write 4, we carry 2. 4 times 2, 8. 8 plus the 2 we carry, that is 10. So we write 0, we carry 1. 4 times 2, that is 8. 8 plus the 1 we carry, that is 9. 4 times 1, we have 4. So at this point, we've been able to multiply 1, 2, 2, 6 by 4. And we got 4, 9, 0, 4. Now, having 4904, we need to return the points back so we can get the multiplication of the actual numbers. Now, this means that 0 0.1226 multiplied by 0 0.04 equals... Now, before we get our answer, we count. How many digits do we have after the point here? How many digits do we have after the point here? Now, counting the number of digits here. 1, 2, 3... Four. There are four digits here after the point. Now coming to this number, one, two. There are two digits here after the point. So this means in total, four digits after the point, two digits after the point is giving us six digits after the decimal point. Now we need to count six digits from the back before we pick where our point will stay. So it means we start from the last digit, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Now, looking at this number, 4,904, if you count the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, there is no any other digit again. That doesn't mean we cannot get our answer. It means we have to continue counting until we get to a point where we can put the decimal point. So, it means counting. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have already exhausted the number. So, we continue counting. 5, 6. We already counted 6. Now, we counted two extra numbers. Because there is no actual numbers here, we are going to put 0 to represent the number. So we put 0, 0. Then we drop down the point. Now there should always be a number before the point, which is going to be 0, since there is no actual number here. So we are going to put 0 here. And that is giving us 0 0.004904 to be the result of 0 0.1226 times 0 0.04. And the correct option is option E, 0 0.004904. So, that brings us to the end of today's section. I hope you are able to learn something new today. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to get access to all our videos. And please do tell your friends about PrepClass. PrepClass is making learning very easy and engaging. Join us and learn with us. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.